three, two, one. We are live and good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Skip Happens. I am Skip Clark, uh, the host of Skip Happens. Afternoon, uh, guy on 92.1 The Wolf and also the program a director at that radio station right here in Syracuse. And, and along, whoa, look at that. It's working, huh? It's working. That's good. <laughs> and along, uh, well, my left, you're right, looking at the screen, of course, Deb Lamphere, the president of the official Country Music Fan Club. And we are joined by Aaron Ed Enderlin. Aaron Ender Hello. Hello. And you want to introduce and Dane? on the line with us, we have Dane Gorman, one of the founding partners of Backstage Nashville. So welcome, Dane. How are you? Hey. I'm good. How are you? Oh, my gosh. It's so good to hear y'all's voices. We are, How's everybody doing? We are fantastic. We are so excited to have been able to partner up and introduce our songwriter nights each week here on the podcast. There's so many people out there that want to get to know our songwriters behind the scenes, their personal story and, and how our songs come about. And uh, we're we're honored that you've been able to to uh, bring us Aaron tonight. So if you don't mind, if you'd tell our audience a little bit about Backstage Nashville. Well, you know, we kind of started just exactly what you said. We wanted the songwriters here in town to have a platform because we always say, what, what would the radio be like if it wasn't for all those wonderful songwriters? And a lot of people just didn't know who wrote the songs. So I know um, when folks came into town, a lot of people were going to Bluebird and some, uh, you know, the Ryman and all the wonderful places here in Nashville. But nobody was doing a songwriter round that wasn't around, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Everybody around is when one songwriter does a song, the next songwriter does a song, and then the next songwriter does a song, and then it repeats itself. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to feature each one of our songwriters so that the audience that comes to our show at that stage, um, which is at 3rd and Lindsley, they get an opportunity to really get to know the songwriter up and up close and personal and hear the stories behind the songs. And um, afterwards, we always do a meet and greet. Um, if you might like this, I don't know, but we kick our show off with a holler and swaller. We're sponsored by Jack Daniels. <laughs> of we course, I'm going to love that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it's during the day on a Saturday because everybody comes into town mm -hmm. and they spend a lot of time down on Broadway. And we thought, well, during the day, maybe we give them an opportunity to come off of Broadway, go to an iconic local club like Third and Lindsley. Mm -hmm. And we're in the back. Stage and one of our business partners, Ray Stevenson, who's also a Grammy Award winning songwriter, he curated and he's an artist and he paints iconic pictures of people like Willie Nelson. And he did a whole series of paintings uh, that related to all the songwriter songs that we have on our show. And so the first, when you walk in, it's couches, it's pillows, it's Tennessee fire, it's relaxed, it's during the day. Of course, we have a lot of people who uh, are hungover, so there's definitely <laughs> options for Bloody Mary and fried food. <laughs> that must be where hangover. I come into this picture. <laughs> well, and you know, and then the songwriters, um, we take some photos, and the songwriters bring their merch. Mm -hmm. We give them an opportunity uh, to sell merchandise. And Aaron, who's coming, who's there? Hi, Aaron. I can't see you, but. Hello. One of our best merch sellers. She has the best merch, y'all. She's got great t shirts, great hats. Her music's phenomenal. She always comes prepared. She's got these fancy suitcases, and they're old and they look perfect. And she's got some places to hang her shirts, and uh, she does well. So we have been, we started in 2016, kicked off um, our show, and we've been sold out every Saturday. Wow. So we've been really blessed and lucky. So. Yeah. What a great but, venue. Uh, too. Yeah. And, you know, and it, it, it's been hard for us because we're people, people, we love hugging. We want everyone to walk in the door and feel like family because we really believe that the environment is that is set up that way. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, with everything going on, but um, it's going to be tricky, but we're coming back July 11th Yay. and we're going to do our best to keep it really safe. And we got a great post that day. Aaron's going to be playing July 18th, yeah. which I'm really excited about. 
And uh, I'm feeling better now because I was just driving through town um, today, and somebody put up a big billboard in downtown Nashville that said, uh, uh, put on your uh, positive pants. And I'm like, (laughs) I'm going to need a whole collection of those, but I'm going to put them on. Absolutely. (laughs) Love it. But uh, we, we're we really excited to be back, and we aren't going to do our shows every Saturday in the backstage. It's very intimate, about 60 tickets. Mm-hmm. And then we do a show every Monday before the time jumpers have been skilled mm-hmm. uh, in the late afternoon, and we can sell up to 300 tickets. And we call it Big Stage Mondays. It's not, <laughs> it's two hit songwriters, and then we love to bring in the young talent, the rising stars in town and give them a, an opportunity to play and showcase their music too. So is there a, uh, Dane, is there a place that maybe somebody viewing this or listening to this, is there a website that they can go to and find out who's playing and when they're playing and what time they're playing? Uh, the, you know, people coming in from out of town, let's say we have somebody, you know, somebody plans on making a trip from the Northeast then they can kind of plan their trip around some of those dates. Our tickets are sold and the calendar's posted at thirdandlinsley.com. Okay. Third being the number three, R-D, not T-H-I-R-D. Mm-hmm. And then you can also check us out at backstagenashville.net. So we usually have the lineup and it'll take you to ticket sales. Too. Very cool. Very cool. I'm a big fan of the songwriters. I mean, you know, I've been doing the radio thing for a long time and I've spent a lot of time in Nashville and we always, you know, being on the radio, we hear the final product, but there's a lot, a lot behind that, that a lot of listeners don't realize. And those are the people that we're really trying to put the spotlight on just like you are, I believe. So it's, it's good to to hear the stories and know how it all, how it was built before it gets to that final, the final, you know, the final show, the big show, you know? But uh, there's a lot, there's a lot behind that. So, well, and a lot of the stories are that's a, the audience that comes to our show. That's their favorite part. Yes, it's the stories behind the song, and sometimes it's not that big of a story. You know, somebody got really lucky. They wrote a song on Tuesday, and Kenny Chesney recorded it on Wednesday. <laughs> sometimes there are so many unique stories, and it just makes you love the songwriter more and the song itself more i met aaron photo show probably re- very early on and you know i was always a huge fan of leanne Womack last call mm-hmm. and uh aaron is my favorite storyteller and she also her stories are her songs i mean when you hear her songs, you close your eyes you always feel like oh my gosh i i've lived that song that song she how did she know that story about me? You know, mm-hmm. so she named my car just a little FYI. We were having fun. <laughs> she was just couldn't believe I hadn't named my car, and it's silver and it's a Ford, and so she named it Emmy Lou. So there I you love go. it. I love. You gotta name your vehicle. Most guys name their trucks. Come on, it's the way it is. <laughs> you have to do that. That's right. That's I love right. It. I'll have to find some good country names to name my songs after, <laughs> uh, my vehicles after. So, so, uh, well, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. We've grown a, uh, well, we've, we've really come to love the songwriters and what's mm-hmm. gone, gone behind. I mean, just over the last couple of years, we've had this, uh, just this found love for the songwriter. So, um, Aaron, it's a pleasure to have you. Welcome. And if you don't mind, maybe give our audience a little bit of a background on your journey through country music and how, I think I read you've been in Nashville 19 years now, somewhere yep. from there. Oh, yep. Almost 20 now. Oh my Oof. Lord. Changed a lot over 20 years. I do know that. Yeah. Oh, it has. Really. Where, where is home though, besides Nashville, Aaron? Uh, I'm from Arkansas. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very so down the road. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm from Arkansas. I moved here when I was 18 and went to school just outside of Nashville and uh, at MTSU and mm-hmm. uh, was already way in love with country music. had been performing some and writing some. And when I got here, it was just so amazing. This town is so full of just incredibly talented folks. I just started soaking up all the songwriters nights I could and uh, meeting people and um 
I actually went to school for the recording industry. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a lot of my classmates and things wrote too. So we'd get together and write and play shows on campus and all that good stuff. And uh, then when I was a junior, I ended up meeting a publisher that started working with me and, and did demos of a couple of songs, which, uh, you know, you get to go in with all the great musicians that you've seen their names on your favorite records and they bring your songs to life, which uh -huh. is so cool. And uh, one of those songs was Monday Morning Church. And uh, okay. right as, I guess, my senior year, uh, Alan Jackson recorded that with yes. uh, Patty Loveless on harmonies. And uh, he ended up putting it out as a single. And I got to go straight into a publishing deal and write songs full time. Wow. Um, what, uh, what did that feel like when you heard that Alan Jackson was going to record? Money? It was pretty wild. I mean, it doesn't ever, I don't know. There's a part of me that every time I hear somebody like sing one of my songs, it seems a little bit like somebody took a computer recording program, you know, and punked mm -hmm. you <laughs> just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but I de definitely, you know, I remember driving down Music Row and hearing it come on the radio and was <laughs> totally in the, the thing called love moment, you know, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> a movie for those of y'all. <laughs> no, but yeah, it was incredible. And I, and I got signed to RCA records then too, uh, for a development deal. And, uh, I hung out there for a couple of years, never ended up putting anything out, but got to do some recording in the studio and, uh, learn a lot about that and, and write. And, um, then, you know, I've been lucky enough to have songs recorded by a bunch of my other heroes, like Randy Travis and Terry Clark, Reba McIntyre, uh, Luke, Luke Bryan. Bryan, Tyler Farr, yep. Joey and Rory. Joey and Rory. Oh. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That yeah. is, I, I knew you, you had written a song or two for Luke Bryan, and, and I've heard about, you know, the other artists as well. So that, that's pretty cool. That's that's quite a quite a rap sheet, that's I guess. When you have sheet, all that yeah. on there, that that's pretty awesome. <laughs> but the, here, yeah. and you've and, been there 20 years. So Yeah. And then know? I've lately been able to start putting out my own records and play. Mm -hmm. And I've been able mm -hmm. to play the Grand Ole Opry, which was one of my biggest dreams. Uh -huh. uh, get to go out on the road uh, and play for folks. And so it's been really cool. So during the time of writing, you, you focused on writing for other artists or were you focusing just on writing with the whole, like, cause like you're saying now you're putting, or you started putting out your own. Yeah. Album. So as a songwriter, I just wonder, some songwriters just stick to songwriting and they don't want to mm -hmm. go to that other level. I've always enjoyed performing my own music and doing that. Um, I enjoy both parts of it. And in writing wise, I've always been one of those writers that I just try to write whatever the best song in the room is that day. Uh, I, there are some people that are really good at, like crafting a song or doing a specific thing. And I kind of feel like I just get into some sort of, you know, I grab the tiger by the tail and go with it <laughs> wherever it goes yeah, that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sound like it comes very easy to you. Like somebody could just give you a line and you're like, yeah, sure. I'll just go throw something <laughs> well, together. Well, you know, that's our job is to make it look easy, right? <laughs> yeah, but we all know there's a lot more to it, so. Yeah. Even though, I mean, you can write a song probably in a couple of hours, but it's the quality of that song. Sometimes mm -hmm. the great songs. No, well, we, we've been talking to some people, Deb, where maybe a, a great song has been written in a matter of a day. <laughs> then there's other songs. It's like, you know, they go a week and eh, they can't, they, come, up they can't come up with yeah. anything. And then there's mm -hmm. other ones that are just, you know, they've worked on for a good period of time and they've gone on to be super big big songs but they put a lot of thought into it so yeah i think that's one of the things that keeps you hungry as a writer because there's always a little bit of magic a little bit of chance like you mm -hmm. got to have the right idea on the right day and everything just kind of comes together um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty cool it's pretty wild when you write where do you find it is the best place to write um it I mean, really like, depends. Right I, yeah. <laughs> right I, yeah. I mean, I've written in a lot of writer's rooms down on yeah, Music Row, yeah, yeah. Uh, right at home. When I was in college, I used to write in the stairwells at night because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, didn't want my roommate to kill me. You ever sing in the stairwell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because sometimes the acoustics in the stairwell yeah. are just unbelievable. Mm hmm. Yep. 
did you feel when you were younger and you started out in this industry that you knew you were going to be successful in your own way in doing that? Or did, was, was there ever a point where you thought, ah, it's just not going as quick as I want. I might do something else. You just kept. Hard- I mean, I think you always have that hope and that love. Uh, I don't know that there's a lot of, you just know anything, but I do know that if you keep at it and you work hard, uh, no one can take that away from you. So, um, keep moving I, forward and yeah. don't look back. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I've gotten to meet a lot of amazing <laughs> people and do a lot of really incredible things that, you know, I, if I had planned it, I'm, you know, you can't like plan it. It wouldn't have turned out that way. If, right. You know, right. Right. Like, Currently, uh, one of my biggest influences is Reba McIntyre, who mm-hmm. I was lucky enough to have a song on her last record. And I'm actually uh, currently featured in the American Currents exhibit at the Hall of Fame, the Country Music Hall of Fame with her. Very uh, cool. Very put cool. Put some new artist in there with their heroes and mm-hmm. do a cool little exhibit. And, uh, you know, I, there's no way when they called me, I was like, what? Um, like, that wasn't even on my radar of things that, you know, I should be working towards. You're funny. I heard, uh, I think you were telling a little story on one of your, I was watching one of your episodes about how uh, after you wrote your song for Alan Jackson, I think he had invited you to come <laughs> meet him and you were like, oh, I've got some family in town. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> but you didn't realize it was Alan Jackson, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd been out playing late the night before as musicians will and I wasn't really yeah. awake and somebody called and they just said, Hey, Alan wants you to come to a show tonight. And I was just thinking, Alan, who? I don't know anyone named Alan. And even though Alan had cut, Alan Jackson had cut my song, it just, Mm -hmm. I was so green that I couldn't, That's amazing. never would have dawned on me that, uh, yeah. Me, Alan Jackson. Yeah, I mean. So then I, then I ate a little crow when I called back. (laughs) (laughs) But you went to a show, right? I did. Yeah. So he's awesome. He's he's one of our favorites. Alan is definitely a, just a great artist. We all know that. Actually, okay. she's written for a lot of our yes. favorites, Reba yeah. and Terry Clark. And um, like you I, said, Randy Travis, we grew up with all Reba that. McIntyre. I've always been a fan of Reba for ever since I started country radio. And that's going way back since day one. And, uh, you know, I mean, I was just um, a lot older now, but when she was first starting out and I was just like, she just blew me away. And, mm-hmm. you know, even to this very day, she still does. And when she walked out on the Ryman stage, Back in February, when we were in town for the country radio seminar, I just went, "Oh my God!" There you know, I used to be a pretty cool. I mean, I, I've been around a lot of these people for a lot of years, but uh, when you see Reba, when I see Reba, I just like I'm like starstruck. I mean, I will be the first to tell you that I just get all giddy and and all that. I just it's just me because I just so look up to her and love her music so much. And it oh yeah, like, she is absolutely and, incredible. Um, and, you know, she always, I just, I want to be just like, you know, a little pinky's worth of her in terms of she just, she thinks about everybody and everything and is just such a class act and yeah. all the time. I mean, uh, and still, you know, just hungry to put out great records and make great music. Um, I went out to see her uh, with Brooks and Dunn in Vegas. That's oh, wow. on my bucket list. <laughs> yeah. And I was actually, at the time, I was uh, co-publishing a writer with her. And so we went backstage to say hi, and we go back to her dressing room, and she's got, like, trays of chicken fingers with all the different <laughs> dipping sauces, which is, I'm sure, what you picture, you know, being that. And she just, like, holding a chicken strip. She's like, hey, you want some chicken? <laughs> it's like, Reba, you don't have to give me your chicken. I can get, I can get some of this over I'm fine, here. I'm like, fine. <laughs> take care of yourself. <laughs> That is so cool. Is there anybody that actually, like, I get, all, as I just talked about, I get all giddy over Reba McIntyre, but is there anybody that you would get, like, gonna... you know, oh, my God, this is, mm-hmm. even though all the years you've been doing what you're doing, as professional as you are, uh, how, you know, you're so good, but is there any artist right now that you would feel like, oh, my God, like I like I was just telling you about uh, Reba with me. So yeah, is there anybody like that? With- I mean, Reba is my, you know, Oh, no. I would definitely get like that right. around her. And <laughs> Dolly Parton, too, I think. Ah, oh, Dolly. Dolly. Yes, mm. absolutely. Absolutely. So cool. Have you ever done anything with Dolly at all? I almost got a cut on her once, mm-hmm. uh, but but didn't end up fitting at the last minute. But just to know that she listened to one of my songs is pretty cool. Yeah. 
Well, I'm sure a lot of these artists listen to a lot of your songs. I mean, it's not like you just started last week. Mm -mm. You've been there for 20 years and you've definitely got, you know, quite the list. So that's pretty okay. cool. So you had 2018 was a, a very good year for you, I read, right? You were oh, you're yeah. one of the next women of country. Yes, that I saw was, that. Congratulations yeah. yep. on that one. Yep. And uh, trying to think, you hit what single, you had something come out in 2019. I should know off the top. I'm having a break. Uh, I had a, I put out a new record November 1st and I had That's released it. EPs leading up to it. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, uh, right. Did a little bit different this time, which was cool and uh, got to put the record out. And I actually got to de debut it the night it came out on the Opry at the Ryman Auditorium, which was incredible. It, how was that experience standing on that stage at the Ryman? Man. How do you feel? What do you feel? It's incredible. I've done it a couple of times now. And um, I mean, both there and the Opry House are just such, yeah. so special. Um, Standing in that circle. Yeah. Wow. But you I can know. really, you can feel the ghost, especially out there. I don't, I don't know. For one thing, I worked at the Opry for a while. Okay. So uh, I got to be friends with all the other hostesses and stuff. So I felt like I had a whole bunch of friends cheer me on when I was there, you know, performing for the first mm -hmm. time. <laughs> Uh, and I've played the rhyme in a couple of times at private events. Sure. But last May, I got to play for the first time at the Country Classics on the Opry. Mm -hmm. And uh, did rehearsal, and I was fine. I was thinking, okay, I can do this. And then uh, went out there when I started the show, and I looked at the very front. There's the, this piece of board that they left there, and it still got the boot scuffs mm. from all the shoes of, you know, Patsy Cline and Hank Williams oh. and stuff. And I lost it. I That's totally okay. screwed up the beginning yeah. of the song. Not get emotional. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check that next time we're there. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna look for that. I did, but I can understand. Yeah, I mean the the board being up there and just the scuff marks or from the heels or from the boots. Wow. Boots. And you think, wow, that could be Patsy Cline's. Mm -hmm. That could mm -hmm. be Johnny Cash. That could be, wow, stuff wow. like that blows me away. Absolutely blows me away. And people like you. I mean, being a songwriter and, you know, the meat of the music, it's right there. People put people like you putting those lyrics together and you're telling a story and almost anybody listening, for example, country radio would go, you know, that's about me. That's that what she that line in that song. That is me. And how you come up with some of those lines. And I guess it's, it's real life. I mean, after all, you are human. You are a real person. And you have relationships. You, have, you know, we all go through life, and we all have different situations. And when we write about them, I'm sure you, you know, you will relate to somebody. Somebody will relate to you. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's wild that I, I think we all have different things that we gravitate towards naturally. I always think it's funny. My aunt was a, an ophthalmologist and she would tell me, I just don't understand how you write a song. And I would be like, well, I don't understand how you operate on an eyeball. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, <laughs> I'll sit back. I'll have an experience and I'll say, you know, this would be a great song. Then I'll sit down. I'll say, I can probably try to write a song. I can't even get the first two sentences to match up to any kind of rhyme even. So I'm like, there's no way I'd be, I'm like, this is a great experience. Someone needs to write a song about it. Cause I certainly can't yeah. do it. So, so on that note, Aaron, mm -hmm. what would you tell Deb if she wanted to be a songwriter? <laughs> she said she doesn't think she can do it from a songwriter such as yourself. What would you tell somebody that uh, would want to be you yeah. know, thinking about yeah. a songwriter? I mean, I studied a lot of the music I love, just like really mm -hmm. dug into the songs I loved. Like I can remember I had a journal in high school and I would just write the lyrics to songs that I loved in there. And um, mm -hmm. I think you kind of absorb things that way. And I think one of the biggest hurdles for people is just, uh, you know, it's scary to put yourself out there. It's, mm -hmm. it's tough to just be yourself and just say things however you would say them. I mean... I've had a lot of times, even in songs that have been cut, that I'm like, is this really that interesting? Is anybody going to care that I'm saying this? Like, this is just how I would say this. But right, right. then, you know, sometimes it surprises you um, what connects with other people right, right, uh, and, right. and how it works. Um, you know, the first song that Terry Clark recorded, I have a line in there. Um it's called not enough tequila, not enough tequila in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
I was running the chorus and I tried to call a, fr a couple of friends who spoke Spanish and nobody was answering their phone. And I think this was maybe before texting was really a thing. Um, 20 years. But, ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, so I just was like, okay, because I had this line, I was like uh, thinking, okay, here I am, you know, sitting in this local bar with a sign hanging and it was saying something in Spanish was mm -hmm. what I, I was looking for something in Spanish to put on this sign in this imaginary bar that I'm sitting in and I couldn't find anything. So I couldn't find anybody. So I just said, well, I'll just put, uh, there's a sign hanging saying something in Spanish about let the good times roll, <laughs> which I was like, this is so ignorant. People are going to be like, you couldn't figure out like how to say this in Spanish. <laughs> um, but then I saw the review come out in, I don't remember if it was Billboard or Rolling Stone. And that was the line that they hung on. It was like, this is so real. I mean, this is exactly yeah. like, you know, so many people don't know Spanish and people put these little Spanish things in songs. But she's just like, I don't know. I, this is. It went. It flew. It, went. it did well. Yeah. So it's like you, you don't know what people yeah. are going to gravitate towards. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So. So uh, you must have, uh, well, we're hoping that you might have a song or two that you have uh, a little story behind, because that's one of the things that we love as an audience is to hear a little story on how a song came about. And maybe you have some time to play one or two. Yeah, I know yeah. you have another uh, commitment after this, so we want to be sure to keep you on time. Yes, absolutely. But absolutely. Uh, I was hoping maybe you'd swing one in there. I would love to play a couple songs. Right. That would be great. It so happens she has the guitar right next to her. It story. just so happens. And, you know, some songs have very interesting stories and, and some more just come together. I love inventing characters because mm -hmm. um, it entertains me, too. Um this song I was thinking about playing you, I wrote with my friend Sarah Siskind, who is a, an amazing singer and songwriter. And uh, I had this little idea of uh, I can be your whiskey. Um, and, you know, I think I, I was just thinking about how we have these different vices that we turn to. Um, when we need something to shoulder us up and thinking about, you know, young love songs are great, mm -hmm. but we all know that that's not, not always what happens. And so I was thinking more along the lines of, uh, you know, a couple that finds themselves in a bar and, and it's not their first, first shot at love. It's maybe their seventh or eighth or ninth shot, you know, and uh, they find something, something beautiful there. Uh, and I'm seeing some comments show up too. So, hey to y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Yep. We got Gina, we got Gina and Amy, and uh, other comments coming up as well. So, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. So, here's what we came up with. All right. Okay. Stronger than 90 proof 
Just wait and see what one kiss can do. Dear, if you think it's too good to believe, don't worry, baby. Cause this rounds on me. And I can be your whiskey, I can be your cigarette, I can drown that memory that you're trying to forget. If your loving cup needs filled up, cause she left you bone dry empty. Baby, I can be your whiskey. Baby, I can be your one more chance, your one more try. My love can get you so high. I can be your whiskey. I can be that cigarette. And I can drown that memory that you tried to forget. If your loving cup needs filled up, cause she left you bone dry empty. Baby, I can be your whiskey. Baby, I can be your whiskey. Yeah. One of the yeah. things I yes. love um, when there's just the artist and the guitar and the song, it just seeps right in there. Like I feel like you just feel mm -hmm. the the emotion Absolutely. Absolutely. right with you. That was beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you. Was I'm that um, when I was watching uh, watching some of the videos today? Was that uh, did, was that the one in the bar where the gentleman comes in and, and sits yeah. the with the lucky strike and then mm -hmm. keeps leaving, then coming back and keeps the leaving. Groundhog Day one, yeah. Yes, yes, it's <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And I'm like, took me a minute. I said, okay, he's leaving. Oh, wait a minute, he's back. Oh, he's leaving again. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then you're on stage singing. And eventually, he writes the phone number on the piece. Actually, the that's not me. That's an actress. I'm the oh, bar really? director. I'm cleaning the bar. Oh, really? okay. Yes. Oh, they, I didn't know that. So Especially I'm just observing. Get close to not realize it wasn't you. But wow. Okay. Okay. Now, was that by choice in the video that you choose not to be the one on the stage and have somebody else? It was in that one, and you know, it was a little different, a little interesting, but. uh you know, I, I like to be an observer. I like to just facilitate the story, help bring it to life. and Even though it's your song. I thought it worked really well. It did. It did. Because mm -hmm. I, I watched it over and over and over again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's good. But you're right. The Groundhog Day one, where it just keeps going, coming back, going and leaving, coming back. So. <laughs> be on the bar with the lucky there strike. we go so. there we go and the funny thing is as i'm listening to the song um that is a vision that i would have like if i were in a bar watching a couple of people i could think of those items but i could never put it together in words like that it's just it just it it's just amazes me it really does you have no idea how much that amazes me that there's that Thank talent you. out there so beautiful aaron enderlin Aaron Anderlin, love That's it. That's what makes sure. Yeah, I know. I love the name too. And I remember <laughs> reading about, you know, being the next big thing in country and uh, being in the business for quite a while. So it's a, here again. You're no stranger to it. You've been there 20 years in Nashville. You moved in from Arkansas, and you've never looked back. You've had a great career, and I, and I think it's because your attitude, mm -hmm. your thinking, and, and I I love listening to you just talk. Because, and, and I don't mean this in a creepy way, but your voice, please don't. I know I, I have to, nowadays, he I don't know what. you strange things. Yeah, right I'd there. say a lot of strange things, but I, I mean it because your voice is so soothing. I was just going to say that. Your Very voice sweet. is like, and you're so relaxed. Mm -hmm. And I could sit here and just listen to you. Just talk to me. You know what I mean? I mean, well, thank that, you. I right, don't so mean when that. you can't sleep some night. <laughs> yeah, I'll call he Aaron. Might, he'll Aaron, he'll talk to me so down I can go to, to sleep. To no, no. <laughs> I think that that is something as a songwriter. That's part of what makes you such a great songwriter that you have that attitude 
and you just you're so laid back and so relaxed maybe in, i really don't know you so maybe maybe inside you're going like oh my god oh my god but uh, <laughs> coming across is the fact that you're so laid back you're thinking you're constantly thinking about what you're going to say what you're going to write you're just constantly thinking and just very soothing too to, to hear the song and hear you talk so well, thank you very relaxed on stage right you know i do pretty good on there i think i used to get really really nervous sometimes every so often i do still but uh you know something that people don't come to a show to be let down you know they want to have a good time mm -hmm. so just know that from the start they want to be on your side <laughs> oh yeah that is true that is true Aaron, do you go out with a full band? I have some, uh, and I've also toured some recently with the trio, which I really like. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I do a lot of stuff, just me and my guitar also. Cool. Chris Christopherson style. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love Absolutely. It. Love it. And speaking of Chris Christopherson, have you ever had the chance to sit with him? I have not written with him, but I've met him a couple of times. Okay, cool. Very good. It's been really cool. And I've seen a bunch of his shows. I almost uh, flunked out of my finance class and uh -oh. college because I skipped a test Dane to that. go to a concert. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell Dane. Don't tell Dane that. <laughs> I don't, oh, she's still there. Are you still I, with I, us, I guess Dane? that she is. <laughs> I can't help but be with you. Oh, that's <laughs> now hop in there anytime. Do we have time for one more, Aaron? I oh, yeah. I wanted to do your, your, your new release that's coming out. We yeah. Yeah. So we talked a little bit earlier, but um, I did, I've done a couple of different kinds of things in the last year, and I decided to record a cover of one of my favorite songs, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band's Fishing in the Dark, mm -hmm. uh, which I just love. And I played that song since high school and all over the country. Mm -hmm. And it just always uh, makes me smile, makes me feel good. And I love the imagery in it. I'm definitely a late girl. I love being out in the trees and the water and... Um, uh, just thought it would be fun to be able to take it in the studio and put it out um, with a little bit of my own spin on it. Very cool. One of my favorites. No matter who does it, it's like one of my favorites. I'll oh, yeah. The time, so. And uh, Jeff Hanna from the nitty gritty actually played on it for me so Excellent. that was extra cool the name i was thinking of, trying to think of earlier when we were talking before the mics went on so yeah he's Good awesome Jeff Hanna. yes absolutely when he sang it at that party i was at it just blew me away so oh yeah yeah very cool all right you're up Crazy yellow moon coming up tonight, shining through the trees. Crazy stars singing and lightning bugs are floating on a breeze. Baby, get ready. Cross a field where the creek turns back by the old stump road. I'm going to take you to a special place that nobody knows. Baby, get ready. Ooh, you and me go fishing in the dark, lying on our backs and counting the stars where the cool grass grows. Down by the river in the full moonlight, we'll be falling in the night just moving slow staying the whole night through feels so good to be with you spring's almost over and summer's come days are getting long i waited all winter full of time to be right Take you along, baby, get ready. It don't matter if we sit forever and fish don't bite. We'll jump in the river and cool ourselves from the heat of the night. Baby, get ready. 
I got it. So can we get this on Spotify and Apple? You can in just a few hours. All It'll right. be out tomorrow. So at midnight, Deb. At midnight. At midnight I got Eastern it. time. I love well, my Spotify no, because, subscription. <laughs> yeah, let's hope midnight, right? So that would be midnight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you can jump on Spotify and give it a listen. And uh, wow, that is, that is cool. It sounded I, fantastic. Yeah, it, it does. And that song will never, ever, ever get old. No, it will not. Never. Definitely good stuff. Aaron, you are awesome. Uh, it's like I said, I get such a thrill out of talking to the songwriters and finding out what goes into the music and find out a little bit about them. And uh, I, I here again, I love your attitude. I love that you're calm, relaxed. At least that's what we're seeing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everything looks great. And uh, but we also know, on the other hand, that it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. And, uh, you know, you're living your dream. And obviously, it's been going very well because you've been there 20 years. So you know, you made that move to Nashville and you're not looking back. So Thank it's you. been a pleasure. So a couple things. Um, if you'd like to know more about Erin, hit her up on her website, right? ErinEnderlin.com. Yep. It? And uh, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff too. So like her pages, follow her on Instagram. We look forward to your performing at Backstage Nashville. I think, Dane, you said July 18th. Was that uh -huh. the thing? That's Correct. great. So Aaron we're looking Lindsley. forward to that opening. I up. can't, I can't wait to play that show. I know Dane's told you a lot about it, but it really, yep. it's one of my favorite shows to play because they just take such great care of everybody, the audience and the singers and songwriters make it such a cool, different experience. Oh, it's, it's, I, I love it. I mean, I just, the first time I went there, I just connected. I, I just was like, I had to find Dane. I didn't know who she was. I didn't know anything. And I just <laughs> ran up to her and I'm like, I got to talk to you. This is you. I just love this. So we actually have a little bit of uh, New York connections here going, but Dane, you've got a great yeah, thing yeah. going. Go ahead. Thank you so much. It's, it's our pleasure. We're looking forward to doing this every week. And um, you can also go to uh, Backstage Nashville, find us on Facebook, Instagram, yes. uh, like us, follow us, and we'll put our calendar out on all of our socials as well. Absolutely. And uh, Brittany, my other business partner, um, she does an excellent job of doing all the uh, marketing. Plus, she knows so many songwriters and and uh, has great taste in music. So I just wanted to Love give it. her a shout out, too. Oh, thank you, Brittany. Awesome. We appreciate yes. it so yes. much. Absolutely. So we look so forward to uh, Backstage Nashville at 3rd and Lindsley opening up again in July. And Yes. We got to open up. We got to move on. We got to get music <sighs> back out get there. Going. Maybe we get, we maybe we'll be in town that weekend. If we are, you know, we'll be there. But yes, absolutely. Not, we'll be there shortly thereafter. So Aaron, uh, let me know. I'll put you on the guest list. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much. And for those of you tuning in, if you'd like to get more of Aaron, I believe you're doing a, is it Facebook live you're doing here shortly? I am at eight o'clock at eight o'clock, uh, central time. Oh my God. So what time what is time it? Time is it now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's probably five of right? seven 15 their time. She's in Nashville. So okay. it's, it's eight 15. So, oh gosh. I lose, Northeast I lose time. Track. Eastern I'm, time. Northeast time. time. Thank you so much. We love having yes. you. 
Absolutely love Thank you so me. much for having me. Yes, yeah. I really absolutely. enjoyed it. It's a pleasure to meet you, and uh, I hope our paths cross. Like I said, I've been doing the country thing quite a while, long time. Um, and Dane, I look forward to meeting you as well. And we look forward to doing this every week right here yeah. with Skip Happens along with the official Country Music Fan Club. So. We are going to bring cool. the stories behind the songs, the yes. artists that put them out there, bring them to life and and uh, getting us loving that country music. So, And, and I, I do want to add, do you, you have merchandise on your website? I do. I've got okay. T-shirts and hats and I, I even have a vinyl of my latest oh. record. Oh, wow. Vinyl's coming back, girl. <laughs> Final yeah, it is. Back big time. And the reason I say that, and I mentioned this to a lot of different artists, is the fact that we've all been like stuck in our homes and you haven't been able to to go out and perform and maybe make that little extra money to, to pay for gas or go out to eat or, or something like that. And uh, it's just one way of supporting the artists, one way of supporting the songwriters. Uh, get on there, buy the merchandise from their websites. We cannot say that enough. It just, you know, buy a shirt, buy a hat, buy the music, whatever. It's support. It's supporting people like you. And I want our viewers to do that. So yes, it's pretty please cool. Do. Yes. Tune in. Thank you. You're so welcome, Aaron. It's, it's been a pleasure. God bless you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. You never know. We just, uh, Deb and I might pop in some night <laughs> and bring the fam. Yes, fam. There we go. <laughs> Dane, it's been a pleasure having you join us as well. And we will definitely be talking. All right. Thanks, y'all. Thank, thank you. Y'all you. have Bye. a good night, Aaron. Thank you. God bless. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching Skip Happens along with the official Country Music Fan Club.